Please rise. Begin this afternoon with these words from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I see, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. For in the day of trouble, He will keep me safe in His dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of His sacred tent and set me high. If I had only known the last time would be the last time, I would have put off all the things I had to do. I would have stayed a little longer, held on a little tight. Now would I give for one more day with you? Now Cause there's a wound here.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. You may be seated. We're gathered together as family and friends in the funeral service of Rick Rodness. And on behalf of Rick's family, I just want to thank you for coming today, coming to honor Rick's life, to encourage and support uh, the family and their loss. And uh, I know just evidence today, Rick loved his job. And the many of you from Center Space Homes uh, that came shows uh, also the love that you had for him and uh, the radio, uh, the motorcycle club, and uh, just your being here and all of you today. Uh, just so great to have you. I know all of you are going to miss it in, in different ways. And also thank you for the many prayers and the acts of kindness, the messages uh, that have been shared with us as a family. Um, what a blessing it is being a family, to have friends and a church family that gathers around you in times like these. And I just want to extend from our Redeemer's Church and our staff. Just our deepest sympathies to you, to May, and Rick, and Cody, and Caitlin again, and uh, just praying, we've been praying for you, God's peace in abundance, and for each one here today. Following the service, uh, there's going to be a fellowship time, you're invited to, we'll go out these doors and down the hallway to the cafeteria uh, for some coffee and bars, and just a good time for you again, just to greet the family. I know they would appreciate just being seeing you and being able to, to greet you. And uh, committal service will be at Rose Hill Cemetery uh, following the fellowship time, probably around 3.15 when after the school gets out here we'll have a processional to the cemetery. So if you are in a processional, we ask you to drive with your flashers on. We gather today to find comfort and encouragement from one another, but also to be strengthened by God's Word. And also, we gather to get to worship God for His faithfulness, for His great love for us, for His mercy to us in Christ. And I want to start with prayer this afternoon, but His invitation to us in Matthew 11, 28 is, Come to me, all you who are weary, and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you as we gather this afternoon for your presence here. Lord, thank you again for just the family that uh, of Rick. Lord, for his, his parents and siblings, and Lord, again we pray for, for May, Cody and Caitlin and their families, just in a special way, but each one here today, we all come with hurt and sorrow and loss of healing in, in our lives. So we thank you today that you are the God of all comfort, and that you comfort us through the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for Rick, for Rick's life, for all the ways that he just impacted us, and Lord, we just think of 30 plus years of marriage that you gave to him and me, the blessing, the restoration, and for their family, Lord, just how you did such a redeeming work. So Lord, we thank you for, for their marriage. We also thank you for his children, his grandchildren. Think of his parents here today, Robin and Mary Lou, and we ask just for your comfort and your strength and grace to go through this day. Lord, we thank you for the vocations that Rick had. All those who unknowingly may be blessed by his craftsmanship. All the kitchen, all the other comment or things he made for people to enjoy being together, eating, Lord, we don't know, we know that 
That was how you called him. And now, also, for all those who were, all those tenants and people, co-workers that he worked with in uh, that center space, or that just didn't, he enjoyed serving people, caring for them. So we thank you for his dedication. Lord, thank you also for the, all the other ways, the hobbies he had, uh, the motorcycle club, the camaraderie he had with them. Lord, just thank you for all the ways that he impacted us. And Father, we also just thank you for your faithfulness. Your faithfulness to Rick through all of his life and into eternity with you. Your faithfulness to us as we grieve, as we go on from this day. So Lord, I also just pray that you would give us the, the hope that is in the resurrection. That one day you are coming again. And you are going to raise us up. You're going to make all things new. You're going to right all wrongs. Until that day, Lord, we just again ask for your, your grace and mercy and great love for us to bow to your Son, Jesus Christ. And in his name I pray. Amen. I'd like Randy, Rich, and Brother Robert to share the church. I'm Randy, I'm Rick's big brother, and I'm glad to be here today. I've been asked to read some scripture from the, the book of John, chapter 14. It's some words of comfort. It was directed towards Jesus' disciples, but uh, it's also for us to help us calm our hearts, calm our nerves, calm the loss that we feel. In the previous chapter, chapter 13, Jesus was telling his disciples of three years that he'd been with them. His time on earth was coming to an end. There was something that he had come to do, and there was something he was going back to finish up. And his disciples, they just didn't quite get it, even though they were with him for years. And he had to explain to them that, you know, I'm, I'm going someplace. You, you can't follow me right now, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to get you. And Thomas, he, he had a real hard time with that. So Jesus was trying to comfort him. And Jesus says in John 14, verse 1, Don't be worried and upset, Jesus told him. Believe in God, and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. I wouldn't tell you this if it wasn't true. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I'm going. Thomas, his disciple, said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way to get there? And Jesus answered him and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Heavenly Father except by me. It's Comforting to know that all these years Jesus was preparing a room for Rick. And probably a perfect garage for Rick too. If you know, some of you know Rick. And the time came and Jesus came to get Rick and take him to this beautiful place in the mansion, in a beautiful garage. And Jesus took him there and Rick is there waiting for us and we just hope that all of you will find a room next door and be able to borrow his perfect tools or whatever when the time comes for Jesus to come back and take us to be with him in heaven. I'm going to invite Kate and uh, she's going to share some remarks on behalf of the family. So. For those of you who may not know who I am, I am Rick's daughter, Kate. On behalf of my family, we would like to say a very special thank you to you all for being here today as we celebrate the life of our loved one, Rick. We are now thankful to you all that have prayed for Rick and our family during this time of loss. 
We've been an outpouring of support in phone calls, messages, visits, and meals. Thank you for blessing our family. Words truly can't express our appreciation. Request a dedicated husband, father, papa, son, brother, uncle, nephew, colleague, and friend. Seeing so many of you here today in honor of Rick shows just how much he was loved and will be missed. We struggle with the pain and the grief of losing our Rick too soon, too young, and unexpectedly. Each day isn't guaranteed, and God calls us each home according to his timing and his plan. During this last week of life here on earth, those closest to Rick were blessed to be able to gather on his bedside. This was a gift within itself, as we were given the time we needed with Dad to share those special memories and even some laughs with the one we love so dearly. I personally was given one of the greatest gifts during Dad's last few days with us. I will for be ever cherished, and that was the ability to have my dad along my side as I married my best friend. Finding a gift or joy during this time was something that Dad would have wanted, and I'm forever thankful we were able to do this in his honor and in his presence. When I think of a life of my father, I think of his passion for his flowers. Over the last week, our family has shared many remarks about Rick and his special green thumb. When I think of my dad, I think of him and his life as a beautiful flower that had so many different layers and petals and vibrant colors. On the outside looking in, many of those who knew Rick would notice that he aimed for perfection, had an eye for attention to detail, could be stubborn at times, and reserved in a larger group setting. When you peel back some of these petals, you will see that Rick was a family man first, hardworking in all that he would do, that he strived for perfection so others could enjoy the benefits. Selfless, that he would drop anything and everything to lend a helping hand or to put others first before himself. Generous, and that he always wanted to provide or to give first before receiving, and would seek to light up a room with his infectious smile, even if he was out of his own comfort zone. When you peel all the layers back to this beautiful flower stand within Rick, you will see love and forgiveness at the center. He was so lovable that our mother married him twice. Their true love, their love story is truly beautiful inside and out. It's a testimony and gift from our Lord for all to see. We have promised you, Dad, that we will stand by and protect our mom as time heals her broken heart and longing for you. Our memories will forever live on and be remembered. From the younger years of my dad raising go-karts with my brother Cody to restoring Z cars as father and son, the bond over the years these two developed for their passionate cars will forever be treasured. My dad was my hero, and as his little girl, I will forever hold on to the times when he protected me when I fell alone. He taught me the importance of staying true to myself, not changing who I am for the sake of others. Rick's grandchildren were his pride and joy, often brought out his softer and patient side. The playful memories spent with each brought back memories from when we were kids. He invested so much of his time in projects, such as building a sandbox, building a train set in the basement, setting up the outdoor pool each summer, and making sure to have the best of the best pool toys, all simply for the enjoyment of his grandkids. Taking the time to go for cruises down Broadway in the Corvette, Dad would find joy and humor, making sure to squeal the tires just to hear the laughter and giggles of the grandkids by his side. All the memories and experiences we shared will continue to be the legacy carried on in the years to come. His grandkids will never forget the adventures and love shown from their papa, Rick. The Rick we've all grown to love and was a part of our lives will forever live on through each one of us. He has left behind a legacy, and we will remember him for who he was and what he challenged us each to be. Let the memories and laughs be shared, for that is what he would have wanted. Life is too short, tomorrow is never guaranteed. Let us all find comfort in knowing he is and will forever be with us wherever we go. Watching from above, he will never go unknown. Our Rick was taken soon, too soon, but he has now been set free. It was our Lord and Savior's calling to bring Rick home, and he is now in heaven being free. Goodbyes are never easy, and we have learned that we can't say goodbye to the one that we love so dearly. Instead, even though we don't want to let you go, we find peace and comfort knowing that we will see you again one day in heaven. 
and we will make sure to look for you by the Father. As we know that's where you will be waiting. Until that day, we pray that the Lord will give us the strength and comfort we need as we navigate through life missing you. Shine from above, and we will look for you in all that we do. I love you to my dad in heaven, my guardian age. This time we're going to have a tribute video put together by
I've known for almost all of my life. He's a couple years older than me. And when his parents, Robin and Mary Lou, moved here in 1962, uh, we were just a couple of months old. And um, my family, uh, they established a lifelong friendship with the Rogers family. So we traveled to see them in different parts of, of the country as they traveled around. And uh, supposedly when they were here, uh, Rick and I got into some trouble. I don't have the best memory on that, but supposedly one Sunday night, he and I painted the basement floor uh, while they were up having coffee and things. So uh, I, I appreciated all that time. And in 1983, I married Rick's sister, Shelly, and so we became brother-in-laws. And uh, just so many memories, 40 years of adult life here in Minot. Um, I don't know how many barbecues we had at Rick's house. It was always amazing, he was a charcoal guy. And always had that extra touch of time, just investing in there. And Randy mentioned his garage. If you've been in his garage or his home or his yard, you know he was meticulous. And I was always afraid to borrow anything from Rick. I always thought if I brought it back and it was dirty or I wrecked it somehow, uh, it would not fit in. And the last thing I borrowed was his gas powered auger from the dirt. And after we got done using it, I remember looking over it several times to make sure I hadn't missed yeah, any dirt on it. And he was that guy. Um, and, but all, all my memories of Rick, the one I cherish the most. Most of you, if you knew him in these last years, you knew him as a gracious, generous, loving, family man. And Rick came through some adversity in his life. But Rick knew the grace, the forgiveness, and the love that he had received through Jesus Christ. And each one of us who knew him, who he we ministered to by his vocation or his family, we were blessed by his graciousness and his generousness and his friendship. And as, as Caitlin has already said, may your marriage, your remarriage, was such a testimony to God's grace and faithfulness to you and to, to him and to your family. So, blessed be the memory Rick Rogers. And invite Cody and some of Rick's nephews and sister to come and enter into the song. Thank you. 
in these last two weeks, uh, many of us have had questions. Questions that don't have answers. And even if we could know them, it wouldn't take away the hurt, wouldn't take away the grief that we are suffering. But I'm just thankful, as the song you just heard, that we are assured that there is an answer to the question, who am I? For the family here today and those close to Rick, we could list a number of emotions that could, uh, we could identify with today. For the family, the relationship change, things that you could identify as today. But the one truth that when our lives get flipped upside down, the one truth we can hold on to does not depend on our circumstances. Does not depend on who we are, but it depends on God's great love for us in Christ Jesus. And it is to know that I am yours. The comfort and the hope that we so desperately need in times like this is found in a person. It's found in the person of Jesus Christ and the promises that he has made to us in his word. So glad that we're not left to find comfort, to find hope on our own today. That God has stepped into our world. He stepped into our broken world today through the presence of his son, Jesus Christ. And he is here today to comfort, to give us hope, through his very presence. I'm going to share some words, scriptures from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Last night we had a family service and Rollin read these verses at the end of our sharing time. And I, I went up and I told him that that's what God had laid on my heart to share with all of you today and that we were both uh, hearing that same, that same message. Um, Roland was my first pastor, and he still is my pastor. Thank you, Roland. Um, but my prayer today is that these words of Scripture will meet you, will meet each one of us with God's love and with the comfort that we need today. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13, read in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not deceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Again, today, we are confronted with our mortality. The fact that each one of us one day will die. And people will gather, as we are today, to remember us and to grieve us. We were created to live forever. But our first parents, Adam and Eve, rebelled against God, bringing sin and death to the whole human race. Grieving comes to us today, whether we want to or not, it's going to come for each one of us. But the Apostle Paul writes here that there are two ways that we can grieve. We can grieve with hope, or we can grieve like those who have no hope. And there is a difference in how we grieve 
because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So thankful today that we grieve with hope. Hopeful grief acknowledges the dark truth of our separation from those who have passed away. But those who grieve with hope also cling in faith to the promise that God will reunite those who are in Christ together in a kingdom that will never end and will be forever. We say things like, I hope I get the job. I hope I don't get sick. Or, I hope I win the lottery. Those kind of hope may happen or may not. But the hope the Apostle Paul speaks about is not based on chance. It's not based on our best efforts. It's not based on how good we are. It is based on faith. Faith in the life and death of Jesus Christ. It is a hope that makes a difference not only in this world, but it makes a hope every day. It makes a hope even on your deathbed. And it's also a hope for all of eternity. Listen to how Paul explains death for those who have placed their hope in Jesus. He says that they have fallen asleep, or they sleep in death. For the Christian, for the believer in Christ, bodily death is a mere sleep, implying that there will be a bodily awakening in the resurrection. There will be a day when Christ returns, and everyone will be raised again bodily. And those who are in Christ, he promises, we will be together with Jesus forever. We are devastated by Rick's death. And at the same time, we're comforted by the hope that he had in Christ Jesus. Our human relationships are significant. Rick was a son, he was a brother, he was a husband, he was a father, he was a papa. He was a friend, he was a co-worker. And today as we think of Rick and how, I say young, because he's my age, how young he was, we're reminded again that our lives are not in our hands. Reminded to value our relationships. To say I love you often. To give those hugs. Forgive and to be gracious. But if our earthly relationships are all that we have, and if our earthly life is all there is, this would be a truly sad day. A day without hope. And Rick's sudden passing brings all of us, awakens all of us to the fact that we do not know what our life will end. Rick's most valued relationship was with his Creator, his Redeemer, and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when facing death, there is no comfort or hope in being told that you are a good person, or that everything will be okay. And as hard as it was for us to let him go, we know Rick's hope was in a promise that was given to him through faith in Jesus Christ. Through faith he believed. He believed those words that he was forgiven all of his sins. He was believed that he already had eternal life. Our hope is that we will see him again. How can we be assured of this? The promise is secure because Jesus did die. And he did rise to life again. Verse 14, Paul wrote, For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in the earth. Our 
hope is not that God will somehow overlook our sins or that he grades on the curve. Our hope is in believing that Jesus, the Son of God, did die for your sins and my sins. He died the death that we deserved eternally. We deserve to die eternally for our sins. And Rick, Rick was a sinner like all of us. But that's why Christ had to come. He had to come to this earth to rescue and to redeem us. It was his death on the cross that paid for the sins of the whole world. For all of our sins. For all of our guilt. And we also believe that he rose again. Our hope is in the fact that one day, the th on the third day, as he rode victorious over sin, death, and the devil. So believing in Jesus, believing he died for your sins, believing that he rose from the dead makes death a sweet sleep for the believer. Because all of our sin, all of our guilt has been atoned for. And we will be raised to eternal life. Our hope today is in the person. It's in the person of Jesus. And he comes to us today. He comes to us in our grief. He comes to us in our brokenness. He comes to us in our sin. Not with condemnation. He comes with words of comfort. And grace. And forgiveness. John 3, 16 through 18. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe in him stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Our Heavenly Father is so gracious. It's His great love for each one of us here today. It's His great love for the world that He gave His Son to die for us. And whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but will have eternal life and be raised up with Him. It's not our perfect faith. It's not us trying to live a good life that saves us, but it's our imperfect faith that grasps a perfect Savior. Believe in Jesus Christ. Today we greet with hope through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I just invite you, I invite you to believe today, to believe in Jesus, to know that you are forgiven, have that hope of eternal life, to be reunited with all those who've gone on before and believe, to be reunited with our Savior Jesus Christ, and also just to be comforted by His great love for you in Christ. My prayer is that you would know that hope, and that you can grieve Rick's passing with the sure hope that you will see him again. And being together for eternity, where there's no more sin, there's no more death, no more pain, no more goodbyes. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you today for your Son, Jesus Christ. You created us knowing that you would have to send him to die for us, because we were unable unable to really, truly obey you, to love you, to love one another. But I thank you that you sent your son Jesus. He did for us what we couldn't and died in our place to pay for all of our sins. Lord, I thank you that Rick knew that. And today, yes, we grieve, but we grieve with hope. And we're just grateful again today that you've done all of that to us by your grace. Lord, fill us with the hope of the resurrection that we might too be prepared for when you return or you call us individually. 
So strengthen us. Strengthen us with your word and with your spirit. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. I would invite you to rise and together we'll pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. We're going to close our service today with the song, Blessed.